All right, so for this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our patient, Ben, and Ben presents with Pusher syndrome and anosognosia after a recent posterior lateral thalamic stroke. The patient is undergoing gait training activities with an emphasis on safety. Which of the following interventions is the most appropriate? Uh, so we have A, which is standing on the uninvolved side and cueing the patient to lean towards me. B is lowering the cane height on the uninvolved side. C is place the cane in the involved hand and encourage weight bearing through the affected side. And D is standing on the involved side and pushing the patient away. All right. So we got a lot to do here. A lot of answer choices, uh, really a, a big mouthful here. Let's go up to the top and break this down piece by piece. So we had Ben presents with pusher syndrome. All right, let's stop there for a moment. Now, pusher syndrome is one of those conditions that can come up in the neuro department. Uh, you got to really know what this condition is and how to treat it because it can be pretty particular. All right. And so pusher syndrome like you'll see later on in the question, it can happen due to a posterior lateral thalamic stroke. But a patient who has pusher syndrome has deficits or issues with their perception of their body's orientation. All right, in layman terms, this patient is really off balance, but they feel like they're upright, okay? So they feel to themselves that 20 degrees to the right or 20 degrees to the left, they're standing upright, all right? But to you, when you look at them, you're like, no, buddy, you're, you're tilted off space. You're, you're, you're tilted too more, much to the right or you're tilted too much to the left, all right? And they're looking back at you and saying, well, no, I, I feel like I'm in a good position right now. I'm, I'm, I'm straight up. I'm, I'm straight up and down. All right. And so as as a clinician, when you look at this particular patient, you you see that like, OK, this is a big problem because my patient here is leaning too much to their affected side, to their weaker side. And that is going to produce a high risk for falls. Right. Because the side's weak and they can't recover as easy. All right. But this patient has no idea that that's what's going on. This patient feels like they are straight up and down. And if we look at this question, it actually says that the patient has a nosognosia, which is a condition where the patient doesn't even perceive that they have a problem. They lack self-awareness. They can't even realize that they have pusher syndrome or a stroke or any deficits. They don't realize that. So Ben here presents with pusher syndrome and anosognosia. And this is after this posterior lateral thalamic stroke. Okay, so now we're off to the, to, the, to the right speed, right? Everybody's on the same page. Now, let's continue down the question. It says the patient is undergoing gait training activities with an emphasis on safety. And that makes a lot of sense to me. Obviously, we want to get this patient back to being able to walk appropriately with the right assistive device. Okay, great. And then we have this emphasis on safety because we know that the patient is leaning towards the affected side. Okay, so which of the following interventions is the most appropriate? And then we have our answer choices. Now, can I slow up for one more, one more time, all right? One more time. I want to tell y'all something about pusher syndrome. You know how I was telling you how it's like the patient is off-center, that they're leaning towards the affected side, the weaker side, all right? And they feel like they're right up and down, but they're actually leaning towards the side. Okay, great. The problem with pusher syndrome, though, is that they're using their sound extremities, like they're using their good arm and their good leg to actually keep pushing themselves towards the weaker side. And to a person just looking at them who knows no different, they're going to look at them and be like, what the heck are you doing, dude? You're pushing yourself over to the weaker side. And you're going to fall if you keep doing that. But you're, the patient doesn't realize they're doing it. All right. So the pusher syndrome is, is when your patient is actually using their sound extremities to push themselves over to that weaker side. It's a perceptual problem. And we need to do whatever's necessary to make sure that this patient, yes, learns how to go through gait and, and gets back to walking and ambulating correctly, but does so safely. So let's look at our answer choices again. It says standing on the uninvolved side 
and cueing the patient to lean towards me. That's A. B, lowering the cane height on the uninvolved side. That's B. C is place the cane in the involved hand, encourage the weight bearing through the affected side. And D is standing on the involved side and pushing the patient away. All right, so let's go through A, standing on the uninvolved side. That's you, okay? So the therapist is going to be on the patient's uninvolved side and cueing the patient to lean towards me. Now, here's the deal, y'all. I like this answer because you're telling the patient, listen, there's an issue that's going on. You're leaning too far over to the other side. I want you to lean towards me. So you're giving the person potentially some verbal cues and even tactile cues to lean towards you. The only problem with A that I don't like is it kind of doesn't satisfy the whole idea of safety, right? I mean, in the question, it said that we have an emphasis on safety. So if you're standing on the patient's uninvolved side, well, what the heck is on the other side? Who's guarding them on the involved side? All right, so... You're placing the patient at risk for falling if you're trying to gait train them and you're on the uninvolved side and nothing's there to protect the involved side, okay? Especially when you have a patient that's, you know, really, uh, really tending to like use their strong extremities and push over to the weak side. You want to make sure the patient's guarded for sure, all right? So I don't like A because it doesn't satisfy the safety perspective, Let's look at B. B says lowering the cane height on the uninvolved side. Hmm. All right, so patient has a cane. It's on the uninvolved side. And we're talking about lowering the cane height. Like, what would that really do? When I think about it, if we lower the cane height, what does it do to the patient? It causes the patient to have to shift their weight over to that side, right? Because the cane height small. I mean, just think about this for a second. I know you might be driving or with the weights right now, but put your hands down to the side and, and imagine that you had a smaller cane that you were using, you know, with, let's say, your left side. And you'll see that, well, if the cane's a smaller height, you have to lean over to that side, right? And that is exactly what this is talking about. Lowering the cane height on the uninvolved side, which shifts the weight away from that weak side. Is that what we want? I mean, I would say, yeah. I mean, I think that that's a good strategy. That's a good intervention to get the weight away from the weak side. So I'd like it. Doesn't mean it's the best answer just yet. Let's look at the rest. So C, place the cane in the involved hand and encourage weight bearing through the affected side. Now, here's the deal. Didn't we say from the basis of po uh, pusher syndrome that the patient is already pushing to the affected side, that they're already pushing to that weak side. So they don't have a problem weight bearing on the weak side for no reason at all. I mean, they don't have that problem. We're actually trying to get them away from doing that. So I wouldn't place the cane in the involved hand. First of all, they're weak on that side. And when the cane needs to be on the uninvolved. OK, so that's one reason why I don't like it. And the other reason is I don't want them to weight bear more through the weak side. So, see, I just don't like it. It violates a lot of the basic principles of pusher syndrome. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that one. B is still our best answer. Let's look at our final one right now. It says D, standing on the involved side and pushing the patient away. So that's you standing on the patient's weak side and trying to push the patient away from the weak side. Should you do that? Now, I would say that that's also against the principle of, principles of pusher syndrome. All right, think about it. If you're trying to push the patient away from that weak side and the patient really feels like you're pushing them over right now, the patient is actually going to feel like by you pushing them, you're actually trying to push them over and make them fall. So what are they going to naturally do? What's their going to be their instinct? Hey, they're going to fight you and you're going to reinforce them pushing more to the weaker side. It goes against the pusher syndrome principles. And so D, I do not like that answer either. All right. So that leaves us with our best answer, our final answer of B, lowering the cane height on the uninvolved side. Best answer. Congratulations to those of you who got this one correct.